See love youth, what is happening? Welcome out tonight. Things look a little different this evening. I hope you guys are warm right now. We haven't had power in my house in like three days. And so I'm actually up here at the church right now getting to record for tonight's message. Uh, listen, we're starting a new series tonight called Swipe Right. And the idea behind this one is just taking a look at love, sex, and dating from a biblical perspective. And I know anytime we start talking about love, sex, or dating, you've always got that, you know, it just gives you the, the, the butterflies or something, right? There's always like, are we really talking about this right now? Um, you know, like, you know, when you're in your class and you've got your best friend sitting next to you and the girl or the guy you like, like walks in and your best friend does that, like, you know, they do that, that they, they can't contain the excitement. That's a little bit about like how topics like this are. It's like, there's this nervous, frenetic energy that comes with talking about love, sex, or dating. And I think it's because all of us sort of have a part to play in this thing. Like everybody has an opinion about it. Uh, you know, most people wanna get up someday, get married, they wanna have kids. Um, you know, our culture is so sex saturated, oversaturated, everybody's got an opinion on what sex is and how to have great sex and who to have it with. And, you know, there's so many different things related to love, sex, and dating out there. And that's why a series like this is so important because we're gonna really lock in on what the Bible has to say about this sort of thing. And before we even um, get to the dating portion of things, before we get to the sex portion of things, we really wanted to take some time to talk to you tonight about life before the person, like how you set yourself up for a great dating relationship and how you really become the person that the right person is looking for. So we're gonna talk about a few of those things here tonight, but just a quick little intro to that. You know, for me, like the first thing I remember about um, just wanting to be in a relationship, first thing I really remember is uh, third grade, I was in Miss Glad's class. And there was a, a girl in there that I thought was just super cute. She made me so nervous every time I got around her. Third grade, man, I'm like eight years old, I think. But I remember thinking, I was like, she's super cute. I wanna make her my girlfriend. And just to show you, I dug this up earlier. This is third grade Jeremy, are you ready for this? Are you ready? Third grade Jeremy, here it is. Here's my school picture. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at that hottie. Isn't that a beautiful boy? Third grade Jeremy, I know, irresistible. Uh, but I had the biggest crush on this girl. And you know what? Uh, I, thought I, I thought I had it all figured out. I remember I went back to my, my house later on. I was sitting around with my two best friends, Abdullah and Lucas. And uh, I was telling them about this girl that I liked in the class. And I remember saying these words. I remember saying, she's the one, guys. She's the one. I'm going to marry her. Haven't you been there, though? Be honest. Come on. Haven't you been there before? Like, you little over dramatic here. How do you know if they're the one? How do you know if you're the one? How do you know if it's right? How do you know if it's wrong? Who establishes the lines and the boundaries here? Before we get to any of that, I think it's so important to talk about life before the person. So without further ado, check out our post on the Insta story, or check out our post on our Instagram, it's also available on YouTube. We're gonna just talk through four things tonight that you can do before you meet the person. I love you guys. We're gonna see you guys next week. Stay warm. Let me have all my single people, my single party of one people, put their hands in the air for a second. Where are you at? Man, we treat singleness like a curse sometimes, don't we? We do anything to get out of this stage. But you should read what 1 Corinthians 7, verses six and seven say. They detail that singleness is actually a gift, that it's a time in your life when you don't have any other attachments, but you can focus on your own well-being and your relationship with Jesus. It also says that marriage is a gift. And so you might be asking yourself, well, Jeremy, do I have the gift of singleness or do I have the gift of marriage? And I just tell you the easiest way to find that out is to raise your left hand and take a look if there's a ring there or not. Because if there's not a ring, then right now you've got the gift of singleness and you should take advantage of that. Treat your stage 
like your gift. It's not a curse, it's a gift. What'd y'all have for dinner last night? No, really, come on, tell me. What'd you have for dinner last night? Oh, that sounds a lot better than what I had. We had zucchini lasagna last night, and that's not because our electricity was out and we couldn't buy food or whatever, but uh, that was because my wife has figured something out when it comes to her diet, this thing called the process of elimination. There are just some things that we are not going to introduce as far as food goes to our bodies and our household because there's some things that are going to energize us, some things that are gonna give us a zest for life, keep us healthy, and then there's other things that will make us less healthy. The same is true for your spiritual life, and the same is true for your relationships. There are some people, there are some habits out there that will drain the life out of you. And what I'm saying right now is that you need to learn the process of elimination. You need to learn the power behind removing some of these things from your life. If you don't know where you're going, I promise you somebody will be happy to show you the way. What I'm telling you is this, it's kind of like buying a car. If you show up on a car lot and you don't know your budget, and you don't know your preference, you don't know your make, model, whatever, I'm telling you some smooth talking salesman will come by and get you exactly what you need. I wanna be clear, you should have standards and you shouldn't apologize for them. Listen to this, this is straight out of Proverbs 31. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Here's the Jeremy Fisher version. This is the JFV, all right? Listen, if they don't know Jesus, they might be cute, they might be funny, they might be popular, but in the end, it's gonna be a train wreck. So know what you want, know your standards, and don't apologize for them. If I just had a dollar for every time I heard one of you say, oh, Jeremy, if I just found the right person, oh, my life would be so much better. I would never get in any trouble. Things would make perfect sense. Listen, it's not about finding the right person, it's about becoming the right person. And this is why, is because once you become the right person, you won't just settle for any person. Listen to this, this is Ephesians 5. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you are his children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice to us. You and I are imitating something, and I wanna know, is it God? Are you imitating your culture? Are you imitating your surroundings? Are you imitating your upbringing and those habits? Or are you imitating Christ? Because I'm telling you, once you become the right person, you won't just settle for any person.